this is Erin Stern, two-time Miss Figure Olympia, team Diamatized athlete, and realtor. My love for fitness stemmed from when I was younger. Um, I think my dad wanted boys. So my sister and I were tomboys. We used to race him and you know just run around and just climb trees and stuff. I got into track junior year of high school. My dad said, you know, look, you're out here running next to the horse. You might as well go run at the track and do something productive. I had my horse, Dreamy, and we used to do shows together, competitive show jumping. And in practice, I would take a halter and lead rope, and I would run next to him, and I would jump the jumps. So um, that's what got me into high jump, actually. I went to University of Florida, and I was a junior All-American there. After college, actually, I was still doing the high jump, and I jumped 5'9 in college, but I ended up jumping 5'11 in 2008, and I missed the Olympic qualifying standard by three centimeters. And it was um, kind of a setback when I missed that qualifying standard. And I realized as a high jumper, being 5'8 and you know close to 140 pounds, that genetically it wasn't really in the cards for me to jump 6'8 like a lot of the other girls were going to. I've always been athletic and always lifted. And in college, I learned Olympic lifts and you know learned a lot about the body, but not so much about aesthetic lifting. So after college, I started doing the aesthetic lifts, and um, you know I was looking at the magazines, and, and one of my friends said, "Hey, you should do a figure competition. You're in you know good shape. You've got some muscle. You might as well step on stage." Actually, the Arnold Classic was my pro debut in '09, and that was my fourth show ever. It happened very, very fast. I am motivated to be better than my previous best, and I'm also motivated by the people that I meet along the way. It's just a, a big fitness family, and to be able to inspire and motivate others, um, that keeps me going. Ultimately, I want to be the Oprah of the fitness world. Teaching people how to work out, to know that when you have success in the gym, when you're strong, that that translates to confidence outside of the gym and success outside of the gym. It's a, it's a challenge, you know, it's you versus the weight. It's something tangible. And um, by doing that, you're, uh, for me anyway, if I can conquer that, then I, I feel like I can conquer anything. I like to stick to my track roots, so I do a you know, traditional warm up and then I'll do like sprint drills, um, which people stare at me in the gym for doing. <laughs> and then we do have platforms where I work out, so I'll do hang cleans or hang snatch, you know, some type of Olympic lift, maybe five sets of five, and then I'll go into um, my compound movements and then finish with isolation. I do circuit training um, and then I'll do supersets, especially if I'm trying to you know, drop some muscle going towards a show. I mix it up, you know, it's, it's important to not stay in a set routine because um, your body will get used to it and you'll plateau. I started Tabata training and I really like that. Um, and that's of course um, a total of four minutes and it's a type of interval training. So you go um, all out for 20 seconds, rest for 10, all out for 20 seconds, rest for 10 for a total of four minutes. I never do steady state cardio. Um, I'm always doing sprints or some type of interval training. Um, I, and I count Tabatas as cardio. I don't think traditional cardio is very effective because, or the low intensity cardio anyway, because you only burn calories while you're on that treadmill and then once you step off, the uh, it's done. Eight days a week. No, <laughs> I'm there um, five to six days a week. You have to rest. Rest is when you recover, it's when the muscles grow, and if you don't give your body time to do that, then you're, you're not going to advance um, in your program. You know, maybe I'll go to the beach and relax or throw the football around, but it's not, no working out on a day off. I usually work out by myself, it's just me and my iPod. Right now, it's either Dubstep or Johnny Cash. <laughs> I think that the main thing about lifting is to learn the fundamental lifts. You know, there's six basic lifts. Learn how to squat, learn how to deadlift, learn the bench. And then from that point, you can vary your grips, vary your stance, and you can actually develop, you know, a few hundred exercises from those six basic lifts. I 
I typically do a 40-40-20 diet, so I'm doing proteins, carbs, fats, um, in that order. It's just what works for me, and I, I do a lot of sprints, so I need to keep my carbs up a little bit higher. I think we find what works for us. I know a lot of people do the lower carb and higher fat, but to me, I just I can't think straight. Yeah, I think it's important to try out diets for yourself. Um, you try the low carb for a week, see how you feel, see how you perform in the gym, and you know maybe try the 40-40-20 diet and see if that works. Um, and then also think about cravings. If you're craving something salty and sweet and crunchy and, and sugary, then maybe a higher carb diet is better, whereas if you're craving a fatty food, then you might want to look at maybe a, a lower carb diet. It's mostly paleo, but not paleo in the sense of the paleo diet. More of, if it wasn't around 10,000 years ago, I try not to eat it. It's important to me because whatever makes it easier on my body um, to digest and assimilate, and I feel better, you know? I, I cut out wheat and I cut out dairy and I feel good. Proteins, uh, I do a lot of bison, uh, a lot of chicken, fish, eggs, and Carbs would be quinoa, black rice, red rice, and, um, did I say carbs? <laughs> I love carbs. And then fats would be like avocados, flaxseed oil, and like pepitas and pumpkin seeds. I like to really kind of structure my caloric intake around my workouts. If I have a workout that day, I'll eat a little bit more before, and I'll make sure I get good carbs and protein after the workout and I'm a fan of mixing it up. I do believe in a little bit of intermittent fasting, but as I get closer to a show, I do like to do five to six small meals because I find it gets me you know, to the leanness that I need to be on stage. I think you need to keep things creative, and I go to the farmer's market, and I'm a fan of having a lot of different colors on the plate, so a lot of seasonal vegetables, trying new things, and keeping it fresh and healthy, but definitely, mix up the way you cook stuff because nobody wants to look at egg whites and oatmeal over and over again. I don't really believe in cheat meals and I have a lot of friends that go out for pizza, blooming onion, ice cream all in one sitting and that's a real fast way to set yourself back and you know pack on pounds. Uh, I do believe in treat meals, something that's you know maybe not as clean like sushi or you know frozen yogurt, something that still has some kind of nutritional value. It's definitely not a diet because saying diet um, to me it means deprivation. So it's more of a lifestyle change and it's more of making small changes a little bit at a time. You know, if you're only eating one big meal a day and you're trying to switch to five to six small meals and go to the gym six days a week, it's, it's not going to happen. So, you know, maybe try three small meals and, and don't really count calories. Go for the macronutrients. Make sure you have a protein, a carb, and a fat at each meal. And set a big long-term goal. Don't be afraid to set huge goals, but you have to set small ones so you can achieve that final goal. Well, a supplement is just something that's going to help you recover better. It's going to help you train. I mean, I think it's, it's important to try the basics. Again, it's just like lifting. You, you don't want to start with a comprehensive, detailed list of supplements that you may or may not need. Start with, you know, your protein. Get a shake and see how you feel and go from there. I think, um, I, I do a lot of whole foods, obviously, but I think for performance, it's important to, to supplement. I strongly believe in protein. I think uh, it's the building block of muscle, so you need that. It's really bad, but I actually will take like a half a scoop at a time and I just dump it in my mouth because <laughs> I've seen the creative recipes, but um, I'd rather just eat food. And the protein to me is uh, just helping me recover. And it, it tastes good, but I'm not gonna make like a, you know, one of those mug muffins in the microwave because it'll explode. I tried, so. When I wake up, I, I do take um, you know all of my vitamins, my CLA. I take fish oils and all of that stuff too, and um, I do the protein after my workout, obviously with a little bit of carbs, and then I take my ZMA and my GABA about an hour before bed. It's important to know why you take something. You know, you're not just going to walk into a store and 
pick things off the shelf. You want to know uh, what function it has, why you're taking it, and doing research and reading and knowledge is power. So definitely, definitely read up on it. That's it for me. That's my training, my nutrition, and my supplementation. And if you want to find me, you can find me on Body Space at Track Fiend. And I'm on Twitter, it's Aaron Fast, or look for me, Aaron Stern, on Facebook. For more videos and content like this, keep coming back to bodybuilding.com.